Hey gearheads, welcome to the Speed Beast YouTube channel. This is LS7 Devin, a seasoned tech with years of experience and have all my ASC certification tests passed. Today, we're going over camber, caster, and tow in your vehicle's alignment. Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or just curious, I've got the expertise to make it simple and enjoyable. Hit subscribe, let's dive right in. So first off, we got camber. Uh, camber with z and this is measured in degrees. So imagine a line, imaginary line going straight up and down. That's zero degrees. Here's your front axle and both your tires. At zero camber, both your tires are straight up and down, just like this. That's going to cause even tire wear because the tire is contacting all of the road surface and that's your road surface so that would be zero degrees of camber and there's lasers that go on the wheels that's how the alignment machine works when you go to the dealership to get your car serviced or any repair shop they're gonna whenever you get tires they're gonna pull your car on an alignment rack and what happens is they're gonna put these sensors on all four of the tires and they're gonna shoot lasers directly past the car and it's very accurate these lasers so if your camber's off just a half a degree or point like 0 0.01 of a degree those lasers will know if your camber is perfect or not and that and that's how they're able to adjust it so with zero degrees you're gonna have even tire wear and now here's negative camber you'll see that in the tuner car you'll see them they think it's cool when you put all that I mean that's very excessive you're gonna have this is the inside of the tire and that's the outside you're gonna have inner tire wear with negative camber I mean on race cars it'll provide if you only use a little bit of negative camber it'll provide a better handling when you're going around the turn and also not all the roads are flat uh, there's a crown to the road that looks like this so instead of this line being flat there's actually a crown to the road. So let's just erase this. Some roads have a crown to them, like this. This is an extreme example. So there's a crown to the road. The reason all streets have a crown is so when it rains, the water will run off the road or else everyone's car would hydroplane. So in, in, in here, here, here's a street okay got the dotted line cars going this way and cars going this way the highest point of the street will be right in the center so it you actually would be like over here so one of the tires is going to be higher than the other so cars actually uh, manufacturers actually specify the specs to have a little bit different it won't be even because on the road there's a crown so they compensate for it so if this was the higher side let's draw it like this because this is how it would really be you know there would be like more camber here or else the car would just steer to the left or pull off the road and it wouldn't track straight because not all roads are flat. And then let, next let's move on before I go off too far. And then obviously negative camber. Yeah, it caused, I already said that. All right. <laughs> next you have positive camber. Positive camber is where the tires will go like this. Instead of negative camber, they'll actually point in. This is what positive camber would look like. And this is going to cause outer tire wear. And uh, the way this is adjusted, there's a cam bolt on the suspension. Instead of the bolt being a perfectly round bolt like you'd always see. Like, all right. So here's your bolt head where you put your socket on to tighten it. And then half the bolt isn't threaded. And then the other half is threaded. And you'll have two of these on your shock. I'll show a picture. Now, one of these sides will be longer, okay? One of these sides of the bolt will be longer. So as you twist it, 
it'll adjust the shock and provide more camber or less on the shock. Pretend this is your shock. You'd have two camber bolts. Or you'd have one camber bolt. You'd have to loosen them both and then you'd adjust it because it'd be like this. God, this stuff's hard to explain. So you'd loosen both of these and it would have a pivot point. So this one's your camber bolt, this one's just a straight bolt. You loosen them both, just a little, enough to loosen up that shock just a little, but as you turn your camber bolt, it'll adjust how much of an angle your shock has, which will adjust the knuckle and provide camber. That's the best I can explain that. With all that said, I hope that makes sense to you and gives you a better understanding of camber. Let's move on to caster. Caster is usually not adjustable on cars. It's usually set from the factory. So caster is where your wheel is positioned inside the wheel well. If you were looking at the car from the side, this would be zero degrees caster. It's right in the middle. Now, this would be positive five degrees caster. That means, let's pretend this wheel's on a pendulum. That means your caster would be set like this and then tightened and locked in that position. So that would be positive caster. Positive caster will give you more high speed stability because it's actually making your car longer, which will provide more high speed stability. I mean, you could think of it as a motorcycle. If you had your front, that's the same thing with a motorcycle. Like if you had your front forks on your motorcycle and you had some caster, you know, this is your seat, whatever, that'll provide high speed stability. But if you had, you know, the more exaggerated, the more caster or the, you know, positive caster you have, I mean, if it was way out here, that'll provide a lot of high speed stability. If you're going 130 miles an hour, it'll, it'll keep the wheel straight. Same in a car at high speeds, it'll keep that wheel nice and locked straight. But on the other hand, If you were to have negative caster, which is pretend uh, the, the wheel on the car is on a pendulum and it was pointed back into the wheel well, like look at all that space there, it's way more forward. Here it's way back. This would not create high speed stability. That'd be a bad, that'd be very bad. It'd be like a motorcycle with its forks going like straight up and down. And then you'd have your frame and everything in your rear wheel. Now at high speeds, imagine how dangerous that is. Pretend you're riding a bicycle down a hill and you're picking up speed going up to 50 miles an hour, even a pedal bike, and you got uh, straight up and down, no caster angle for that high speed stability. If you hit a little rock, it's gonna grab those, that handlebar and just turn it. Same with your steering wheel at high speeds. If you don't have the right amount of positive caster, it's going to be very unstable at high speeds, which is dangerous. Also, steering wheel rollback is affected by the amount of caster. That's when you go to turn your wheel and make a turn, and then you let go, and the steering wheel comes back. The amount of caster you have will affect how well that wheel returns. But that's everything about caster you pretty much need to know. It's usually not adjustable. And then last is toe. Toe is very important. It's like the most popular one. When I used to work as a tech, we'd call it set the toe and go because it's usually all the cars would need. Usually you shouldn't have to mess with camber and you shouldn't have to mess with caster unless something's damaged. And, but you, you usually just gotta do camber and toe. Caster's not adjustable. Something must be bent if that's out. Well, let's go to toe. So imagine you're looking on the top of a vehicle, like pretend you're in the sky looking down on a vehicle. That's what this is. So here's your front axle, your front wheel, and your rear axle with your rear wheels. This would be zero degrees toe. The act like toe is when you turn your steering wheel and the toe and the wheels turn. That's actually toe. So your steering wheel could be straight, but if your toe is off, like both this way, because they can both be this way. 
They can both, one could be positive, one could be negative. You could have your steering wheel straight and your wheels are actually pointed a little bit this way, a little bit this way, or a little bit that way, or this way, which is could cause the car to pull and it could just fight itself. So zero, here's your steering wheel. Zero degrees toe would be the, both the wheels perfectly straight. Now, positive five degrees toe or toe out is when your tires would go like this. They'd be pointed out. So let's say both your tires are pointed out in the front, but your steering wheel is straight. That would show up on the alignment machine as five degrees of toe or toe out. Now this one could be five degrees positive and this one could be five degrees negative with your steering wheel straight. That would cause the car to t pull this way. If the toe was like this, the car would just be fighting itself. It'd probably pull both ways. And also, you'd have outer tire wear with toe out. The outside of the tire would wear. And then last is negative toe, toe in. That would give you inner tire wear. And uh, the way this is adjusted, as shown right here, there's tie rods on a vehicle and you, adjust, you loosen up the locking nut and adjust the tie rod to, the tie rod's like this, it'll push this wheel. So if you got your tie rod connected and you loosen up your lock nut, this, will, this tie rod will actually like expand as you turn this and then lock the nut. So you, what you do is you actually expand this or shrink this with threads on the tie rod and that'll adjust your toe. So those are all the um, adjustments. If you didn't know, I just wanted to explain that really quick. Please smash the subscribe button. Peace.